Hi everyone, it's Leslie of Leslie Writes It All again with another watercolor holiday tutorial for my Strathmore Artist series. Uh, today we'll be working with the Strathmore watercolor cards. These are watercolor paper that's already been cut and scored so it's nice and easy for you to make a card. I will be using this Dollar Rowney Aquafine watercolor paint set and it comes with uh, 24 colors and I'm just holding up this travel palette because it has the same colors in it it's just a more compact version of that if you're a beginner I highly recommend getting the traveler set because it does come with a brush as well brush I'm using a Princeton velvet touch in a size 4 um, honestly I you know whatever brush size you have available um, I can you can use a 3 as well um, just on the smaller side and then don't forget a pencil and a kneaded eraser are really helpful tools as well when you're watercoloring. Lastly, I'm using a Strathmore watercolor travel pad as um, kind of some side paper for me to use um, when I'm practicing before I commit to putting everything onto the card. So I think it's perfectly fine to eyeball it, especially since these are handmade cards. They're not meant to look perfectly or digitally drawn. Um, but if you are having a hard time, sometimes drawing a circle helps. Or if you have a compass or a protractor that helps measure angles, just take 360 divided by 6 and each piece should be about a 60 degree angle. Otherwise, like I said, just eyeballing it should be fine. Once you have the six sides drawn out, you can go ahead and use a kneaded eraser to lighten the markings. It'll still be visible to you. It's hard to see on camera, but I can see the pencil markings pretty clearly. You're gonna use that as a guide to um, watercolor on top of. And from here, we're gonna create just um, fun designs for our snowflakes. If you've never painted snowflakes or drawn them before, it would be a great idea to take a look on the internet. It'll give you some ideas on how to paint or visually like what some snowflakes might look like. I just like adding kind of fun shapes to the sides. Um, you're going to make sure to make these symmetrical. Um, not all six sides have to be the same. You can have fun with it if you wanted to do three sides the same and then the other corresponding three sides in a different way. Um, that's totally up to you to use your artistic license. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm making each spoke of the snowflake identical. You can see as I'm doing this practice snowflake that I'm not using just one color. I love that the beauty of watercolors is that the paint interacts with each other, especially when wet. So I like to create visual interest by adding different shades of blues. There's a little bit of green in there as well. Um, and you can definitely um, take license with the colors. This is just a very fun, whimsical um, watercolor snowflake painting. It's not realistic. So just have fun and choose the colors that you want for this project. I'll be switching it up here with some purples and some pinks um, just to give you an idea of what alternate color snowflakes, snowflakes might look like. And again, I'm changing up the design. I'm just gonna add little dots. Um, other stray lines on here and just make sure that they match correspondingly to the other sides and try to space it out as evenly as possible. And because these are more whimsical snowflakes, I'm just adding few design elements that might not really exist in nature, like just putting a few dots in between these, um, the, the smoke spokes of that snowflake. And when you feel like you've got enough practice, we can go ahead and take out our water watercolor cards. Like I mentioned earlier, these are cut already and scored, so they are watercolor paper that you can paint directly on and put into an envelope and mail out. I like to flatten the card completely so it's fully extended and underneath the palette. Um, then I'm going to take my pencil and just kind of sketch um, the lettering and the placement of the snowflakes. You can choose to have the lettering done you know, right in the center like I did, off to the corner on one side or however you like it to be placed and then just plan the snowflakes to go around it. 
Again, a kneaded eraser is a great tool for lightening the markings of the pencil so that you can see them, um, but they're not really that visible um, after you add the paint on. I'm using a technique here called brush lettering. You'll notice that with the round brush, I can achieve both thin and thicker lines. So on these upstrokes, I'm, I'm forming thinner lines and on the downstrokes, I'm adding a little bit more pressure and creating a thicker line. And that's gonna give you a brush lettering effect. Um, if you have any questions about that, you can just always look up brush lettering or brush lettering calligraphy. And there are so many resources out there that can help you with that as well. As you can see, I'm again changing up so that it's not all in one color. I'm adding some blues and greens and that's going to be the color motif for this, um, this card. And now I'm going to sketch out the snowflakes. I tend to plan where I'm going to put the larger ones first. Those are going to be more focal points. The larger snowflakes are going to be able to get more detail because there's just more area to paint on. Um, so I like to plan around those first. I'm trying to vary up the size, the shape, and the directionality of the snowflakes just to make it a little bit more interesting. And once I have um, all the snowflakes that I'm planning to paint placed, I'm just gonna fill it in um, with a few just dots. Um, so I'm gonna have some whole, some hollow circles and some filled in circles um, just all around to kind of fill in the spaces that maybe aren't large enough for a snowflake, um, but could use some, you know, some detailing. And once you're satisfied with your pencil markings, go ahead and use that kneaded eraser to roll over um, the pencil markings to lighten that for you. It still will be visible while you paint, but not as um, noticeable after the paint has dried. And now let's get to our first snowflake. As you're painting these, um, because there's such fine details with the with each individual snowflake I just want to remind you to don't use um, too much water when you're mixing your colors I always mix onto the palette and not directly into each um, little paint set so you want to use the palette to kind of get to the color that you want and then you're gonna take off any excess water and that's gonna let you um, be able to control your brush a little bit better with fine details it's always handy to keep some paper towels um, close by um, just to absorb some of the extra water. It also can help pick up water off the page if you do notice that you've created a blob um, because you put too much water onto your brush. But you know, I think things that are handmade and hand painted have a beautiful imperfect quality to it sometimes. Like we're human, we're not computers or machines. So I love that there's details that might not perfectly align or might not be you know exactly centered and that's okay with me I don't know if it is with you but I've accepted kind of the beauty and imperfection um, so so I do love painting with kind of a more free style because of that and the whole point of these um, tutorials is to really just encourage people to try art if they've never done it before and to you know learn different skills but have fun in the process so I really hope you do get that from these projects um, and I love that Strathmore invites different artists to um, kind of show everyone their own styles of doing things so I'm really happy to be here and, and you know show you different ways that I paint I really love like a easy and 
you know, simple way of painting. Um, but I think adding different elements together makes things look maybe a little bit more complicated than they really are. But when you break down this project, it's basically, you know, a six-sided snowflake that, you know, just has little shapes and things coming off of each spoke. So breaking it down, it's hopefully it's not as intimidating for anyone who hasn't tried watercoloring before. And obviously this takes practice. This is not my first time painting and it's probably not even my hundredth. Like it's probably, probably in the thousands of um, times painting. So don't feel intimidated. That's not the intention of these projects. I just want you to know that, that more difficult things can be broken down into simpler shapes. Um, so hopefully that will encourage a beginner to give it a shot. And because I don't paint in a realistic way, I love adding whimsy to um, whatever I'm painting. So you can see I'm adding these kind of floating elements inside a snowflake. They're not touching the snowflake. So obviously this doesn't really exist in nature. Um, but, you know, we're painting and are, we're only limited by imagination. So I'm having fun with it. So my style is very free and whimsical and I also love exploring a lot of color. So that's why I love this style of Rowney set. Um, it has 24 colors, but when you mix and add water, you know, your color combinations are pretty infinite. So I love that I can make tons of different colors with this and they're bright and vibrant and really just happy colors. So you'll notice in this holiday series, I don't traditionally stick to a red and green holiday palette, but I do love exploring rainbows and bright colors as well. So I'll show you the process of how I fill out the rest of the snowflakes, but the process is pretty similar to what we covered in the, um, the beginning tutorial. So just feel free to, you know, look up different snowflake shapes, see what inspires you, change your combinations, create your own style of painting. Um, for the smaller snowflakes, I would just advise less intricate designs because of how small they already are, it's gonna be difficult to add more patterns without it getting kind of squished in because of the space limitations. So I would save more intricate designs for the larger snowflakes and then keep the smaller ones a little more simple. And I'm sorry I didn't mention before, um, but now that I'm looking at these colors, it reminds me that when you're choosing colors um, for this particular design, I would stay with colors that are very close to each other. Um, like I wouldn't choose, um, you know, colors that are complementary. I would stick with colors that are adjacent to each other in the um, color wheel. So for instance, I'm using blues and greens. They're very close to each other on the color wheel. Um, I wouldn't use like, blue and orange those are complementing colors so when they mix together they cancel out and make kind of a brownish color so because watercolors are really beautiful when they touch you just want to choose colors that don't muddle each other up so things that are um so if you never had an experience with with color before i would look up um you know color wheels so that you can familiarize yourself with which colors might go better with each other than others and if you're new to painting, color theory is so important that I would dedicate like weeks to understanding color in your palette before you actually start painting. And I actually find so much joy from, from exploring colors. Um, also just, you know, see what color does, you know, 
um, purple and you know green make or orange and blue you might be surprised depending on how much orange or how much blue you add um, or how much water you add what kind of colors you'll get so these you know 24 colors actually can make you know thousands and thousands of different colors so it's worth the time to really explore and understand your palette before you you dive into painting Again, I'm just exploring different um, different types of shapes for these snowflakes. I'm keeping each one individually different because they say no two snowflakes are the same. Uh, so this one I'm starting with a circle, a hollow circle in the center with the spokes coming out of it. And then I'll create a design from there. And you can see each time I'm just kind of dipping my my um, paintbrush into the color and, and picking up very little of it so these watercolor um, little pans actually last so long because you're supposed to um, you know pick up some color mix it with water and just let it you know rehydrate and dry up and rehydrate and dry up so you're never really wasting any paint um, you're just gonna keep reusing it by re-wetting that so I, I never use um, color directly from the pan. It's just like too pigmented. So I always kind of get some of the color off of the brush um, onto the palette itself. So from the pan to the palette to, to your paintbrush and then the paper. And then with this snowflake, I don't know, I just decided to add kind of like, looks like flower petals in the center and then these like leaf shapes um, on the outside I just kind of made them pointy so the good thing about these um, round brushes is you actually can have a lot of control over how large your brush strokes are and um, it has a lot to do with the amount of pressure that you use on your um, when you're um, painting so with finer details you want to use a very light touch and then if you wanted to cover a larger area with paint then you're going to push down and put a little more pressure on the tip of your um, brush there so that more of that brush makes contact with the paper You know, I would say if you're new to painting or even if you're, you know, been doing it for a while, one of the most difficult things to get right is spacing. Um, you can tell one of the um, sides of that previous snowflake is slightly longer than the others. And that's okay. Again, like I said, most people, when they receive um, a card like this or just like impressed that you painted um, and like no one's really looking at all the details I feel like a lot of times artists are our own worst um, critics and you know we're the harshest on ourselves and you know judge more with closer attention to detail all the things that have gone wrong with the painting um, but I hope that things like that don't deter you I think that just getting out up and creating something is really beautiful so no matter where you are in your progress just make sure that you appreciated the fact that you are putting yourself out there putting your creativity on a page um, is, is really difficult sometimes and you should really congratulate yourself for even you know trying When you're getting close to being done, it's important to take a step back and look and see what might be missing or what else you can add to the painting itself. And 
this next step is totally optional, but if you wanted to add a little bit of metallic detailing, if you have um, gold paint or even just a gold gel pen, I just wanted to add a little bit extra something to give it a little shimmer, but again, totally optional and it just very minimally adds a little bit more to the painting. Um, so that's really up to you if you would like to add this. But you can see that these are the finishing touches and this card is ready to be um, addressed to someone with a message and mailed out if it's perfectly in these envelopes that come with this Rathmore set. So let me know if you guys get to painting it.